improving bus service in Durham, more opportunities to plug in for the environment, and new guidelines for the development of next year's budget. We invite you to join us now as we take you inside City Hall this week. Hello, I'm Amy Blaylock. Welcome to City Hall This Week, dedicated to keeping you informed about what's going on inside Durham City Hall. We now know what the draft plan geared toward improving bus service in Durham looks like. Triangle Transit and the City have been working on a review of the Durham Area Transit Authority for the past year. The goal of the project, called Designing Better Bus Service in Durham, is to adopt a three-year plan that will do just that. Designing Better Bus Service in Durham is our year-long planning effort to take a holistic look at the bus services provided in Durham and identify ways in which we can make it work better for the current customers and the community at large and also uh, prioritize what improvements would be made with additional revenue sources. Uh, these are the revenue sources that were identified in the Durham County Bus and Rail Investment Plan last year. and uh, one of those sources, the half-cent sales tax, was endorsed by the voters last November uh, overwhelmingly by 60 percent. The four goals of the project are based on feedback, surveys, and meetings that have been held with riders, neighborhoods, and other bus service stakeholders. The first of those is to improve safety and the perception of safety. Uh, largely that means here uh, on the bus dealing with overcrowding issues that can lead to conflicts and at the bus stops which can also be overcrowding but it also can be lighting uh, other aspects of people feeling safe at the bus stops. The second goal is improving the service quality. Largely that means on-time performance uh, in this context. We'll look at other as aspects so we have looked at other aspects but on-time performance is the big improvement we're making. Uh, the third goal is we're calling fiscal responsibility, and that means in the most cost-efficient manner possible, meeting the, the targets of serving as many people in the city as we can, especially those who really rely on the service, uh, but also trying to maximize the ridership. So doing those two things as cost-efficiently as we can. Uh, that also, what that tends to look like in the draft plan recommendations is matching service levels to what the demand is on the street today. So more frequent in some places, less frequent in other places. Fourth goal is community benefits. And what we mean by that is uh, trying to be consistent with the economic de development goals, with greenhouse gas goals, making sure that we're providing new access to jobs and the job centers in Durham, to the educational opportunities. More, uh, typically, we're talking about the colleges, Durham Tech, North Carolina Central, and Duke University, but also the public high schools. The draft plan was developed using those goals as a guide, and the key recommendations were presented during a public workshop on March 21st. The key recommendations, and this is what we can do uh, if we have all the revenue sources, and then some of them are, are things that we can do uh, in the base scenario with existing revenue and others we can do later. Uh, the big thing is improving on-time performance. Today, the system runs at about 61% on time. We're gonna move that to 90% on time. Makes a huge difference for customers if they know that what's printed on the schedules is when the bus is gonna be there. Uh, the second big improvement is creating a frequent bus network. So what that means, today, the, the most frequent buses run is every 30 minutes. Uh, that leads to overcrowding in some of the busiest corridors, and it means that it's still a fairly long wait between buses. So we're taking the busiest corridors and we'll bring the service up to every 15 minutes during, those, uh, during the daytime hours on, on weekdays. And that would connect downtown with uh, Duke Medical Center and uh, Golden Belt, that's the Bull City connector today and then replicate that frequency of service between downtown and Northgate Mall, between downtown and North Carolina Central University, between downtown uh, and the Village Shopping Center out Holloway Street, and also down to Durham Tech. 
the third is uh, addressing that safety concern, and those are improvements at bus stops. So that's uh, a couple things we're trying to do there. One is make sure that there is a safe place that's away from traffic, it's well lit, and it's comfortable. Uh, and also that at the busiest stops, places like the Village Shopping Center, Northgate uh, Mall, places down by North Carolina Central University, Durham Tech, that there's enough space for people to wait, that they're not uh, in bushes, they're not uh, crowded on the sidewalk, that people can have ample space uh, to wait for the buses that are coming on. Uh, there are more. We're also going to improve the, the service availability, and that means on, for data bus services running until uh, 9 p.m. on Sundays instead of 7 p.m., and also the connections between Durham and Chapel Hill, Raleigh, the airport, uh, running later on Saturday. Those are Triangle Transit routes, but that's part of this plan. And uh, starting Sunday connections on Triangle Transit to the other communities. Besides getting a chance to learn about the draft plan during the workshops, residents are invited to attend a public hearing during the City Council meeting on April 16th. The City Council is expected to adopt the final plan in June. Durham is now plugged in when it comes to providing electric vehicle charging stations for residents and visitors. A ribbon cutting ceremony was held for the city and county's new charging stations on March 21st. Durham has a long history of environmental leadership going back many, many, many decades and uh, we're very proud to continue that tradition here today. The county has installed 12 stations throughout Durham to help meet the rising need for motorists to be able to charge their vehicles. The city has installed two electric vehicle charging stations and purchased four all-electric vehicles for its fleet. Those vehicles are being used by neighborhood improvement services, community development, inspections, and planning. We're running this pilot program with these four leafs so that we can kind of get a little bit uh, measure. Ultimately, to buy these cars, they're a little bit more expensive, but how much is it going to cost us overall from, the, from, as we call it, from cradle to grave, from the time we own it to the time we sell it? Overall, we don't have transmissions in here. Yes, it's got an electric motor, but it doesn't have an engine. So if a battery goes out and it's $1,000, what happens if your transmission goes out in your car? How much are you going to pay for it? So overall, you, you have to take a little bit to gain a little bit in, in every situation. As part of the event, those who attended were able to test drive an electric vehicle around the downtown loop. The charging stations and vehicles support Durham's greenhouse gas emissions reduction plan. That plan calls for a significant reduction in greenhouse gas emissions by 2030. 9% of the governmental greenhouse gases that are produced on a daily basis come from vehicles. Uh, if you look out and see our police department, if you look out and see sheriff's departments and EMS and fire and, and public works and solid waste and everything that they do, it's, it's greenhouse gases. And we're all trying to combat that by getting lower emission vehicles, uh, better emission vehicles, exchanging out our fleet so it's not as old and doesn't uh, take up a lot of these uh, emissions. We, we want to do this to reduce a lot of the, the, the greenhouse gas that comes in. We want to reduce our carbon footprint. The charging stations are available around the clock and are free for anyone to use. A map of where the current stations are located can be found at greenerdurham.net. The city has developed a plan for completing the streets in the failed Dunwoody subdivision. The 12 lot subdivision is located just south of the intersection of Umstead Road and South Riverdale Drive. The developer closed out the development company for the project in 2007 and left much of the street infrastructure incomplete. The Public Works Department has developed a plan for the city to complete the work on the streets with the cost being assessed against the properties within the subdivision. Each lot would be assessed based on a per foot frontage rate. The assessment rate would be determined based on 90% of the actual cost of the project, with the city funding the remaining 10%. Public Works is also proposing that the assessment interest be set at a lower rate than usual and that the property owners have 10 years to pay rather than the typical 8 years. Construction on the final phase of the American Tobacco Trail in Durham is scheduled to get underway this summer. This phase includes the construction of 4.2 miles of the trail from Highway 54 south to the Chatham County line, including a new bicycle pedestrian bridge over I-40. The City Council approved a nearly $9 million contract for the construction of the project. Another $300,000 will also be added to a separate contract.
The project is expected to be finished by July of 2013. A new study takes the well-being of Durham's youth to heart. We'll show you what it found and what recommendations it makes when City Hall This Week continues. Getting closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. Welcome back. The city administration now has guidelines in place to help prioritize how your tax dollars will be spent as part of next year's budget. The budget development guidelines are a set of parameters that the administration will use to develop the fiscal year 12-13 budget and capital improvement plan. The City Council adopted the guidelines during its April 2nd meeting. Because residential real estate and personal property taxes, sales tax, and overall revenue for the City are only expected to grow slightly next year, increases in spending must continue to be limited. We certainly continue to face challenges um, in our revenue collections, particularly related to sales tax. However, we will continue to prioritize our programs and services and allocate our resources to our highest priorities. To do that, the city will use the guidelines to develop a budget that continues to meet the primary service needs of residents while recognizing current economic conditions. I think the most important guideline is that we will allocate available resources to support our strategic plan. The council adopted a strategic plan. There are lots of initiatives in that plan and we want to make sure that that plan is implemented over the next three to five years. Uh, some of the other uh, guidelines include uh, we will propose a water sewer rate increase um, up to 4% and that equates to about $2 per household. We also will establish a street resurfacing fund which is a priority for my community um, as indicated in our citizen uh, survey as well as our focus groups and that fund will be established at a million dollars to address resurfacing needs. One of the other guidelines is that the administration has been directed to uh, consider a rate increase up to property tax rate increase up to seven cents to support the business improvement district downtown. And one of the other uh, guidelines is that the administration has directed the staff to establish a housing fund at one penny, which is $2.3 million to address housing in Durham. The city council will adopt the budget on June 18th. An IBM study that recommends strategies to ensure the education, well-being, and job readiness of our community's young people is expected to benefit the city overall. Durham was chosen for the $400,000 study as part of the IBM Smarter Cities Challenge grant. For the study, six IBM employees from all parts of the world spent most of February living in Durham and interviewing approximately 80 residents, officials, and community leaders. IBM found that while many individual public, private, and nonprofit groups are addressing aspects of connecting youth to opportunities, a more consistent way to coordinate these efforts needs to be found over the long term. According to the IBM team, centralizing these activities would help set concrete goals and allocate resources more efficiently. For more information on the report's recommendations, visit the city's website at DurhamNC.gov. Durham's long-range solid waste disposal plan is moving forward. Find out how the plan will ultimately affect you when City Hall This Week continues. Welcome back. The development of the city's comprehensive solid waste disposal plan is entering a new phase. The comprehensive solid waste disposal plan is our map for the future. It's a plan that's designed to help us renovate or repair or replace our aging transfer station. The plan was needed because the city's transfer station is getting older and a number of issues need to be addressed to keep it in working order. Well, the plan is needed so we don't start operating haphazardly. We are following, we are doing our homework, we are analyzing 
what our needs are, and we'll move towards that means. The plan was developed in three phases, with phase one having been completed. Phase one of the plan is the review of our current operations. It analyzes our financials and it defines the procurement process. $145,000 will now be used to complete phase two of the plan. Phase two, we will develop an RFP. We will see who's interested in building for us or to partnership with us in a public-private deal and we're going to evaluate our best interest in evaluating the offers that we get from private concerns. And it'll define and adopt a plan that takes us on into the future. We should have a good 10-year plan for the future after all is said and done. Once phase two is complete, the project's consultants will begin on phase three. Phase three is simply implementation of the plan. It's building, construction, uh, bringing someone in-house with us to help us get the facility that we need. The updates that need to be made to the transfer station will also help further the city's recycling goals. We now have a new recycling processor, as I said, and we are at long last making money from our recyclables. We're going to encourage Durham citizens to recycle and recycle responsibly only put the things that are recyclable in their blue recycling bin to use our transfer station facility if they want to bring something in. But it is important for everyone to know that recyclables are valuable to us and the renovation of our transfer station is going to help us even more in handling those recyclables. Phase two will be paid for with bond funds. The city is taking a proactive approach to preventing fraud among its departments. The Audit Services Department held a Fraud Prevention Symposium on March 29th at the Holton Career and Resource Center. It featured North Carolina State Auditor Beth Wood as the keynote speaker. The purpose of the workshop was to bring awareness to the potential existence of fraud, waste and abuse in everything that the city does, and to show employees how to prevent, deter or detect fraud in the city's everyday operations. April is Fair Housing Month, and the city is encouraging residents and property owners alike to take advantage of upcoming events to learn about creating equal housing opportunities in Durham. A Landlord Fair Housing Training Workshop will be held on Thursday, April 26th from 9 until 11.30 a.m. That will be held in the third floor of the Golden Belt Building at 807 East Main Street. The free workshop is designed to assist landlords, property managers, and any others who are actively involved in managing rental housing. The workshop will demonstrate effective fair housing management practices and will cover applicant screening techniques, rental agreements, the eviction process, and how to achieve a stable, satisfied tenant base. Registration is requested by April 23rd by emailing juanita.english at dermanc.gov or by calling 919-560-1647, extension 34279. El Centro's Open House Tour will also be held on Saturday, April 28th from 11 a.m. until 2 p.m. at El Centro. That's located at 201 West Main Street. The free event will provide bilingual fair housing training, as well as give attendees a chance to tour El Centro's facility and learn about its programs. No registration is required. The 2011 Resident Satisfaction Survey is giving the city a look at what residents think about life in Durham. We'll let you know what Durham is saying in a new series we're launching when City Hall This Week continues. Get on board the Bull City Connector, a fare free route connecting Durham from the innovation of Duke to the history of downtown to the creativity of Golden Belt. The Bull City Connector is fare free, frequent, and fun, connecting visitors, business travelers, students, and downtown workers to key destinations in and around Durham. So get on board the Bull City Connector Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to midnight, plus Saturdays and holidays. For more information, call 485 RIDE or visit bullcityconnector.org. Welcome back. The 2011 Resident Satisfaction Survey is offering a snapshot of what residents think and feel about life in Durham. The results give the city important information to build on for the future and will be the basis for a new series called What Durham is Saying. Here's City Manager Tom Bonfield with more on the survey itself. The Resident Satisfaction Survey is conducted every two years to help assess resident satisfaction with city provided services. It also allows us to gather input from residents about issues facing the community. 
Those results provide guidance in making service delivery decisions as well as helping to determine how taxpayer dollars will be spent to support the long-term strategic goals of the city. Perhaps the most satisfying message from our residents is that they feel Durham is a city moving in the right direction. To help keep you informed about how we're doing that, City Hall this week will take a closer look at what you've said is important to you. We'll look at areas where we're doing well and areas that need improvement. We want you to know that we are listening and responsive, and your feedback does make a difference. Here's Amy with some of the good news stemming from the survey. We asked and you responded with plenty of positive things to say about life in Durham. The survey shows that overall satisfaction has improved since the 2009 survey, with four out of five people believing Durham is a good or excellent place to live, and three out of four people are satisfied with the quality of life in their neighborhood, satisfied with the quality of services provided by the city, and satisfied with the overall quality of life in the city. While there is plenty of good news to share when it comes to the quality of life and city services, we still have work to do. The city services that residents think should receive the most emphasis over the next two years are the maintenance of city streets, the quality of police protection, and the flow of traffic in the city. We'll be looking further at all of these topics with our next What Durham is Saying segment, focusing on what's already being done to improve the city streets and what changes will be made in the future. If you're looking for ways to help Durham go green, you don't want to miss the 2012 Earth Day Festival. The free event will be held from noon until 5 p.m. on Sunday, April 22nd at Durham Central Park. Participants of all ages will get to take part in green activities, learn about green practices and products, and enjoy great music and food. The Earth Day Festival is sponsored by the Parks and Recreation Department and Keep Durham Beautiful. That does it for this edition of City Hall This Week. Be sure and like DTBA on Facebook or follow us on Twitter to find how you can tune into this show, City Life, and all the city's programming. You can also find us on demand on DTBA's webpage or our YouTube channel. I'm Amy Blaylock. Thank you for joining us for City Hall This Week.